since his emergence 50 million years ago, in a tour de force of creative ingenuity, in a vigorous exploration of new frontiers, man has invented things which go much beyond our imagination. And let us begin by committing ourselves to the truth, to see it like it is and tell it like it is, to find the truth, to speak the truth, and to live the truth. That's what we will do. That's the kind of Britain. Independence of socialism. Good evening. My name is Isidore Abramov. And if my name is known to some of you, it's only because my whole life I've been obsessively championing the human race. It's not easy, though. But I beg of you to stay with me for a few more minutes. And if nothing else, learn that the inventions of man were always meant for the benefit of man. The mysterious evolution of the parking meter started right here, in this house, with the birth of the Dutch Sahara explorer, Baron Auguste Faber, in 1422. And it was right here, in this stretch of sand, that Baron Auguste Faber, 50 years later, in 1472, was exploring the Sahara. He was all alone, except for his loyal English pedigree dog, named Buffle. The major problem the Baron had to face was that there were no trees in the Sahara at the time. The unfortunate dog wasn't able to relieve himself. Being a rational scientist, the Baron realized that if a solution would not be found within days, his dog might die. Unable to sleep, the Baron was pacing up and down the Sahara, desperately searching for a solution. It was 2 o'clock a.m. when the Baron stumbled on something solid. From now on, History would never be the same. Did it change society, historically speaking? No, it did not change society, it did not change history. Did it have any value? Oh yeah, it's a very democratic instrument. It could have been a very democratic instrument. The 
the main part of the mechanism is this unit. Yeah. You have to wind it up, and then it looks after the fact that a minute is a minute. And from the clockwork, the money you insert into the meter is translated into time. It just jumps a little bit. Since the time the human species have inherited the Earth, and after withstanding the ages of ice, flood and fire, man, in a potent gush of intellect, was demonstrating his resilience in the face of disaster. frantically barking dog tied up to the one meter long metal pole named the pole the barking meter in some some streets it's very good to have them yeah, yeah. otherwise uh, nobody can um, bark it's like a nice wife yeah? sometimes you love her sometimes you hate her it's the same as the barking meter <laughs> for a whole week the dog wasn't fooled by the metal pole. But on the seventh day, he pissed. Do you like parking meters? Not so much, but I, I really don't know. I'm investigating, trying to find out what, because most people don't like parking meters, and I don't know why they don't like parking meters. Yeah, it's a philosophical problem. Yeah. But we are business men, and so we sell the best parking meter with technically the best at this moment in the world. <laughs> These relieved the Baron greatly. For a short time, though. A few hours later, the dog was dead. What happened then? The dog was all he had. And when Buffalo died, the Baron couldn't care less about the desert anymore. And what did he do then? He took the barking meter, and that was the only thing that reminded him of the dog. And he went to England. came to England, yes. England, they made an American parking meter under license of the American Rockwell meter. That was the original parking meter made by Rockwell. As soon as he landed in England, the customs officials of King Edward IV confiscated the barking meter and imprisoned the Baron for stealing archaeological treasures from the Sahara. Compared with other billion living organisms, we are probably the only ones who were given the gift of laughter 
the capacity to reason, the ability to dream, and the talent to sense the tremors of happiness. Huge, big, everybody dislikes it. It's like uh, King Kong, in a way. The parking King Kong monkey. So, uh... All in all, we are naive at heart. Gullible, innocent, and romantic. But in studying the human race closely, I came to suspect that another kind of species, foreign, different from ours, have penetrated our civilization. I know that it might come to you as a shock, but let me tell it to you anyway. From the hard evidence we are facing, I came to believe that sometime in the unknown past, a grotesque mutation was formed. An ugly organism dedicated from birth to death to terrorize us all. Five years later, King Edward IV released the Baron. By now, the British monarch knew exactly what to do with the barking meter. This is the exact place where King Edward IV, with the help of a few of his ministers, started to manufacture thousands of identical barking meters, advertising them as objects for multiple use. D-U-A-L, dual, because it had a dual purpose. Yeah, yeah, dual purpose. And the dual purpose was, number one, it limited the amount of time you could stay into a parking space. And the second thing was it collected money for the city. And how much they cost? One. Like this one, about $500 in, uh, in U.S. money. If an individual wants to buy it, would, would you sell it? Yes. To an individual? Sure. We would sell one to, to an individual. I don't know what they would do with it. had a very sophisticated marketing uh, strategy. Well, he know what he did, that guy. Uh, he promoted the barking meter. There was uh, a dog's toilet, a uh, lady's battering, uh, uh, saving boxes. But not only that, he priced them so extremely high that actually only the upper class could afford it. <laughs> it was a business strategy that proved to be right the barking meter became an all-time status symbol. And what kind of chocolate are you using? Well, this kind of uh, chocolate is... Um is Belgium chocolate. What did you feel about doing parking meters in chocolate? So you can eat them and you don't have to put money in, in, in the meter. That Orwellian feeling, they are watching me anyhow. When I would be forced to carry always a paper of, of my identity with me, it is just making me more of a victim of what authorities can do. reflected the real value of the barking meter in the period of King Edward IV. Eleven years later, the by then multi-millionaire King Edward IV was assassinated by being clubbed to death. 
with one of his own barking meters. Later, they used it as an additional, in an additional sense, namely, to make money off it. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. How much money they make out of it? In the whole world? Millions, millions. Yeah, na 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 yeah, na na Following the assassination of King Edward IV, the possession of the barking meter was prohibited in England. of the next few years, the barking meters black market flourished. The prices soared to new heights. But with the politicians' brutal enforcement of the law, the barking meter practically disappeared. Four hundred fifty years later, in 1933, the barking meter was reinvented by Carlton C. McGee right here in this remote farmhouse in the state of Oklahoma. Mr. McGee, Carl McGee. And he went to a gentleman by the name of Jerry Hale, and uh, then they manufactured this product. Uh -huh. And then the, Mr. Miller took to Duncan, who was in the toy business, for yo-yos. You know what the toy yo-yo <laughs> yeah, is? Good. Okay. Uh, Mr. Duncan invented the yo-yo. Hello. Okay. It was just a week before. Okay that Mr. McGee yeah, received yeah. orders from the President of the United States yeah, yeah, yeah. via the CIA okay, okay. to reinvent yeah. the barking meter. My father's orders was to assure Mr. McGee that if he reinvented the barking meter, that it would be used for peaceful purposes, that it would not violate the Constitution of the United States, and that it would greatly benefit every individual in the United States. Mr. McGee's first barking meter was completed on March 7, 1936. No. I'm impressed that it was invented in Oklahoma. Why didn't they need parking meters in, in Norman, Oklahoma? Ah, uh, the president. The president was a great visionary. He understood the needs of the people. He understood the needs of the individual. He knew what was good for America. This is the only library in the world in which a handful of clandestine documents establishing the reasons of the politicians to reinvent the barking meter are still kept. One of them is a letter by the deposed German president, Mr. Hindenburg, to the president of the United States. Dear Mr. President, I humbly suggest that you do not sell the barking meters to the individuals as His Majesty King Edward IV did. I could imagine the barking meters standing erect in public spaces 
I could imagine that you instruct people to insert coins in their slots, and no matter what reason for doing so, you'd give them. They'll eat it, as always. The government of the people is stronger than the people. Once the obedient citizens will see these little monsters with the government emblem engraved on them, they'll be standing on line in order to feed them with their coins, be it their last. And yet, the barking meters will still remain your property. It's no lose situation, and it's a better business. I trust that my advice, if enacted, deserves a small contribution on your part toward my livelihood. I would appreciate anything. Respectfully yours, Hindenburg President. So our policy seems to be successful. It brings you on the right road, and that is the road of responsibility and of humanity, and in the same time, of course, good business. Thank you. And all of a sudden, as if in a magic, the barking meter became the parking meter. On October 10th, 1938, the first parking meter was installed on Main Street in the village of Norman. they are right, think everybody has a right to the space which is of anybody. Yes? Yeah. Yeah? That's one thing. That's a philo philosophical thing. The other thing, is, the other thing is that the parking meter is an instrument by which the government hmm, inflicts, operates the freedom of people. Hmm? And they hate to pay. Yeah. That's it. It took the few American politicians involved in the parking meter operation less than 10 years to sign franchise agreements with politicians of 241 countries, granting them permission to use the parking meter against a considerable fee. What about the rumors, sir, that I've heard? This is ridiculous. There's, there's no evidence to the rumors that we entered the war with Germany in 1940 to divert attention away from the politicians who allegedly were taking money from the barking meters. There was no deal. It's wrong. There were, the rumors are wrong. I don't even want to discuss it with you anymore. Well, it's the biggest business in the world. Actually, it's a perfect example how you can sell something that nobody needs and everybody buys it. <laughs> And June 10th was declared by the national politicians to be an international holiday. the invention of the parking meter? Um, ah, it's a good invention. I think it's a good idea. Well, it's a remarkable, innovative uh, device. It is. Do you like it? No, well, not really. No. Well. No final leaders, watch a parking meter. And as Hindenburg predicted, 
people obediently fed the three billion fifty one million six hundred thousand and forty one parking meters that by now have been erected all over the world. How could it happen, one wonders, that the genuine human species did not recognize the deceptive nature of this grotesquely insane alien clan? Could it be that this clan is equipped with endless means of camouflage that make it impossible for us to uncover its deception? I don't know the answers, but what I do know is that in his 50 million year march of adaptability, man has demonstrated against all odds and in spite of all the politicians that he could endure where anybody else would ultimately fail. Good night.